Hello everyone and welcome back to this Football Manager 2017 experiment where we're going to take a look at what would happen if you gave a smaller European country a Premier League level TV deal. So the country we're going to use in this experiment is Belgium, which if you don't know is the country I actually live in at the moment. I am English but I do live in Belgium. Um, and so I thought it might be interesting to take a look at this league because they've never really had that much success on an international level and elect sometimes do quite well. Club Bruges made the knockout stages of the Champions League, I think, recently. Um, actually, I might have been wrong on that one. Um, but overall, they're not famous for competing at the highest level of European football. So I thought, let's give them a TV deal where every single club will get £100 million every single season. That is about how much money Premier League clubs get. In the Premier League, it obviously varies depending on what position, but I wasn't able to affect that in the games editor. All I could do was change the amount of money they got paid in individual club revenue. So I've had to negotiate individual TV deals with every club where they'll all get £100 million regardless of where they finish, um, which will make the league hopefully incredibly competitive. Now, in case you're not familiar with the Belgian league, um, it does have 16 teams in it. It's also got some of the most confusing rules with extra playoffs in there for Europe and various other things. <laughs> Um, it's definitely worth playing a game in the Belgian League if you haven't in the past because it is very interesting um, but it is reasonably competitive well, as well the big clubs being the likes of Ghent, Anderlecht, Club Bruges uh, Genk also usually do quite well Standard Liège are quite good um, there are a few decent teams in there but I think this is a very good league to become very competitive but I do also think it's going to take quite a long time for this TV money to have a real big impact because they can start start to buy some players but their reputation as you can see eighth biggest competition in Europe behind the Russian Premier League Portuguese League Liga um, so they've got a bit of work to do to climb up the rankings in the league system which means their club reputation levels are not that high either so the quality of players they bring in is not going to be the best but as they sign better and better players perform better and better in Europe they will begin to climb up these league rankings and I can see them over enough time challenging the likes of Syria and maybe even the Premier League eventually we'll have to see what happens but certainly they could get better than Liga and the Portuguese Premier Liga um, so what we're going to do in this experiment is we're going to progress forward I think probably a couple of years to begin with then we'll start jumping forward five years because I think it will take a long time for this experiment to really take hold but we'll take a look at the transfers if there's an acceleration in the amount of money being spent we'll also have a look at how much money individual clubs have in their bank accounts um, now it is worth noting that the finances in the game and the way they're set up it's going to issue payment on the 30th of June now we're already on the 1st of July so none of the clubs have had a payment yet so the first season that the TV money will come into account will be next season um, but it will be interesting to see where the league table is and where teams are in the first year without TV money and what transfers are being made without the TV money so that we, that we can then look back at how much the league progresses both in terms of, terms of which teams dominate the league or go on to dominate the league and also the amount of money being spent on transfers and how they're performing in Europe. So plenty of things to look forward to in this experiment. Do drop a like on the video if you think this is a good idea and let me know in the comments if you've got ideas for other experiments too. This is one of the ideas that was pitched to me in the comments so I'm always happy to do um, suggestions from you guys. But let's jump forward now and see where the Belgian league is. Well, I have gone two years into the future, which means the TV money has been in effect for one year. We're going to start by having a look at the league table uh, for the first season. Then we'll have a look at the transfers and then we'll have a look at the finances of some of the individual clubs. So as you can see in the first season without the TV money, Anderlecht, probably one of the biggest clubs in Belgium, did win the league by seven points. Club Bruges just behind them uh, with Genk finishing off the top three standard Liège and AA again a bit further down the table the other two teams that I did name check um, Ostend a nice seaside town in fifth place um, but yeah the the fourth team I've never heard of Muscron um, but overall the league sort of taking shape as I would have expected it to do so and then the next year after the TV mini did come in and every time got team got 100 million pounds you still had the same two 
but Mechelen actually managed to finish third with Genk and then Ghent in fourth and fifth. Um, and because of the way that the Belgian league assigns European places, you might be a bit confused about the ECEC and then ECC. Um, but you can have a look at the individual rules of the game yourself. I'm not going to take time to explain the Belgian league because it is so confusing. But this means that clubs like Charleroi, um, who got relegated, will have had their TV money come through. So if we have a look at their finances, they should be doing reasonably well. I think that's £52 million they've got in the bank. So half of it has disappeared already, um, probably just settling debt and other issues. Um, plus, I think the tax money might have gone out as well by this point. Um, but they have managed to keep about £50 million, which if you're getting relegated, should see them get promoted immediately afterwards, um, especially in the Belgian second division. I don't think it's the most competitive league in the world. Um, but once again, Anderlecht finishing even further at the top now, nine points. I would expect them to really go on and dominate Belgian football with two titles under their belt. But Club Bruges will give them a good run for their money. And this is a good thing about the 100 million being evenly distributed. 100 million to each team it is 1.6 billion pounds a year being pumped into Belgian football that wasn't there before. So I think this will have quite a big impact over time. Um, if we have a look at the transfers in the Belgian league and drop back to the first season, you'll see that there really isn't a lot of money being spent in Belgian football. Um, the biggest deal was actually, or the three biggest deals, were actually players leaving Belgium. The highest transfer fee paid was just £2.7 million for Cara to Anderlecht from Real San Sebastian. Um, and then the two after that were domestic transfers. But you can see that usually transfers in Belgium, a couple of million pounds, they're never anything that special. Um, and that is how much of an impact this will have. I mean, if the highest Belgian transfer fee the season before the TV deal came in was £2.7 million, pounds, and every club is going to have £100 million, pounds, you can expect to see an awful lot of transfers. And if we jump forward one year when the TV money, TV money was there, you can see those fees really have gone up. The biggest transfer, Anwar El Ghazi from Lille to Club Bruges for up to £13 million. So immediately the cash is coming out. Club Bruges, actually the most uh, prolific spenders. They had the fourth highest or the third highest transfer into Belgium as well of Antonio Milic from Ostend. Uh, also spent another nearly £7 million on Depaya from Feyenoord. Um, £6.25 million pounds on Mate from Lille as well. Um, but they had quite a few transfers in there, so they really went out and spent a lot of money, whereas Anderlecht actually didn't spend that much at all. They don't have any major transfers on the first page, just... Uh, Adrian Trebel leaving the club for Marseille because they will still struggle to hold on to their biggest players. Um, but interesting to see that they are, the Belgian teams are signing the likes of Moise Keane from Juventus, so they are bringing in some pretty good players um, from big clubs around Europe, which will start to build up their team an awful lot more. Now we will... As things move forward, start to take a look at their performances in Europe. In the first two years, because the money's barely been here, I'm not expecting any sort of progression. And in fact, I can't see any Belgian teams right now. There's just Anderlecht, who did finish bottom of their Champions League group with just one point, And it wasn't the most competitive Champions League group uh, either. If we have a look at the Europa League um, and have a look at the group stage of, or the first knockout round, rather, of this um, there was a couple of Belgian teams in here, Standard Liège going out to Athletic Bilbao or Atletico Bilbao and Club Bruges also going out to Nice. So that is sort of the standard we're at. You can see Genk also went out to Sporting, although that was quite narrow. Um, but you can see that they're not managing to get past the first knockout round. That's kind of where they are and that's the year where the TV money was there. The year before that in the Europa League, um, I can't see any Belgian teams in the knockout stages. So they've already made some progress, which is good to see. Now I think what I'm going to do now is jump forward two more years. We'll have another little review like this and then we'll end the episode there. But let me know in the comments how far forward you think I should be jumping each time we do an, uh, another part. And also let me know if you are interested in other parts of this experiment. Um, obviously if nothing really starts to develop it might not be worth going forward. But let me know what you think of it in the comments and if you would like to see more of this experiment. 
Well, we are now two years into the future. It's 2020, three years now that TV money has been coming in. So every club will have had £300 million. Um, but as you can see, one of the quirks of the Belgian Football League, Standard Liège finishing top of the division, 61 points. But the title's gone to Anderlecht, who finished second with 57. Um, now, this is because there is a championship group. No idea how this works, but you can see here that Anderlecht won the championship group two points clear of Standard Liège. I think it's a bit like the Scottish football system where they split the league in two. So Anderlecht, after 30 games, had 57 points. Then they played 10 more games, um, and they seem to have moved on to 51 points. I don't know how this is decided. Maybe it's just the games against the other teams in the top six. Um, but I don't follow Belgian football close enough to be able to understand how on earth this works. That would be my best guess, but if there's somebody else out there who does follow Belgian football, let us know in the comments how on earth this all works. But it means that Anderlecht had their title stolen by, uh, or Anderlecht stole the title from Liège, um, despite Standard Liège being top of the table after 30 games. Um, so as you can see, Anderlecht did win it, Ostend finishing third in the wider table, but Genk finishing third in the championship group, the European Champions Places playoff went to Bruges. It's all a big, horrible mess. Um, but overall, Anderlecht still keeping their title this season. And the year after that, they won it again, 70 points, one point clear of Bruges. Although we'd have to have a look at the championship group to see the final figures. Um, finishing well clear of Bruges, who finished second. Then Genk, Standard and Lockeren get in the last championship places. Stevie VV, um, or Stevie V finishing in sixth place. Lockeren, one of the teams who did finish higher up recently, um, but again falling somewhat down. Muscron near the relegation zone after finishing third not that long ago. Um, so you can see that there is a bit of a gap still between the top and bottom of the table, the TV money not catching up quite as much as you might expect. Um, but if we have a look at the transfers for the season after we looked last time. So you, that remember that first time the transfers were up at about £10 million, uh, £30 million, the highest figure in there. But then the year after that, Club Bruges, still the team spending the most money, actually put out £35.5 million on one player from Ajax, John Pistor. Uh, a couple of other big transfers, Standard Liège did sell Dries Wouters to Napoli for nearly £20 million and reinvested the money in Nani de Marta uh, from Ostend. Bruges losing a player to Atletico Madrid and Napoli raiding Genk for Moise Keane who they signed the season before but Bruges keep popping up in the transfer screen they clearly have a chairman who's willing to assign a budget more so than anyone else I mean Standard did spend a bit of money which is why they were able to compete for the title this season but Anderlecht are not spending a single penny of their money I have no idea where it's going their highest transfer 4.4 million pounds um and then last season, the most recent season, you can see Club Bruges had four of the top five transfers. It was actually Wazland Beveren who spent £30.5 million on Evan Vogel. Um, but otherwise, it's Standard and Bruges who are getting the, ca the checkbook out and signing the players and elect well down the rankings, spending £9.5 million. But Bruges absolutely liberal with their money. Um, I'm not, I am wondering if they've got a proper... Um, sugar daddy only you can see they're rich in finances 327 million pounds their valuation now which is much higher than it was but if we have a look at their finances they don't have a sugar daddy but they've still even after all this spending got 139 million pounds cash in the bank and if we take a look at Andelect um, who are not spending the cash whatsoever if you look at their general information they're worth just 108 million pounds they've still got loan debt as well so they're not spending the money on transfers and if we look at their finances they don't have that much cash in here either so they must have some pretty big liabilities i've got no idea um why that update is popping up but i've got no idea where their money's going either because that's 300 million pounds they received at this point they've only got 42 million left despite not actually making any transfers um so if somebody knows where that money's going do let me know um but overall it looks like club bruges if they keep spending the money they are they will become the biggest team in belgian football i mean 70 million pounds spent this season 60 the year before that 
40 the year before that and then just 3.8 in the first season so you can see they really ramped up their spending since we switched things around overall um now if we have a look at the champions league and see if they did well in the group stage um it's not showing me that season but if we drop back a year and then look at the group stage and all groups for a Belgian team in here uh, we can see Anderlecht finished third in their group a little bit of progression from before and that was a much harder group there um, any other Belgian teams in here no other Belgian team making it into the group stage um, in the Europa League if we take a look at the first knockout round um, Club Bruges in here got knocked out by Fernabache, which is a bit disappointing. But Zoot Varagem did manage to beat Zenit St. Petersburg and elect going out to Chelsea um, in the second knockout round. Zoot Wurtberg or Varagem <laughs> to get knocked out by Fernabache. So Fernabache claiming two Belgian scalps. And the year before that, Genk also got knocked out at this stage, as did Anderlecht. So they are progressing a little bit further in the Europa League, if not the Champions League. I think it will take longer for them to have a big presence in the Champions League than four years. Uh, probably take about 10 years before they're at that point. But you can see it's already having a good bit of progression on the Belgian League. Um, and if we look at the Belgian Pro League Championship, they've actually dropped down to 10th because they've not done well in Europe. They're now dropped from 8th down to 10th. So despite all this money coming in, if you don't get the coefficient rankings in Europe, you're not going to progress up the league. But you can see they are getting a bit further in each competition. Um, I think it's their lack of Champions League progression that is really hurting their uh, coefficient ranking. But I expect them to pick up this quite quickly. The more players they bring in, the more money they start to spend. I think Anderlecht not spending money is going to have a big impact on this because they're the team that should, as Belgian champions, be really pushing on through the competitions but because they're not spending money they're not getting the benefits of the TV money coming in so I think we'll be relying more on Liège and Bruges to actually carry Belgium up the league rankings um, but I think that's going to be it for this experiment I've certainly found it interesting drop a like on the video if you found it interesting too and also drop a like if you would like to see another part to this experiment uh, leaving likes on the video lets me know that you enjoy these ones more than you enjoy other ones so if you're enjoying this one do go ahead and click that thumbs up button make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel but until next time see ya